compressor station, which is located in the northern edge of Jefferson County, about 17 miles northeast of Brookville, Pennsylvania. We are bringing you a program on Heath because this is the last compressor station in the national fuel system that operates the old horizontal type engine. These engines were put in here in 1912, original construction at that date, and probably because of lack of parts and different problems of that nature will not operate much longer. Uh, <clears throat> the lifestyle of people back in that day was affected more by transportation differences from what we see today. There were no bulldozers, no trucks. Uh, horsepower really was horsepower back at that time. And you'll see in some of the following pictures what I mean by that statement. Uh, the man that's going to introduce the history of this station is John O'Hara, the present foreman at this station. I was born in 1928, 16 years after the first construction at Heath Station. Uh, so the story that I'm about to tell is not really first-hand information. I started my employment with former United Natural Gas Company at Heath Station, which originally was Cross Station, the name having been changed in 1938 to conform with the name of the township. Uh, some of the employee, original employees were still here at that time, and I worked with them. That was R.D. Heidinger, R.W. Kirkland, and J.E. Rhodes. Uh, some of the stories that they told me are what I will relate, and they can't be substantiated by any records. However, the time books are on record at Heath Station, and uh, they have been a valuable source of information, uh, uh, but some things are going to be left to the wonderment of the hearer. Prior to 1912, the property occupied by the pump house, machine shop, and office was a mill dam. The structure impounding Callan Run was constructed of hemlock logs and planking some 50 yards downstream from the present concrete breastwork of the cooler dam at the station. In excavating for a subterranean tank in 1980, we dug into that structure and found the hemlock log and planking sound and solid. Lathrop's mill was located in the area adjacent to the south bank of the Clarion River, east of Callan Run, just behind the present location of the Millstone Field Warehouse. At least two buildings remained on the property, apparently dwelling houses left over from the mill. Records would indicate one was a boarding house. Mr. W.T. Young was apparently the foreman, although no timesheets for him are to be found in station records, and he later appears to have had some office in Oil City. In September of 1913, Mr. William Groves apparently moved to the cross station from Crawford Station and assumed duties as foreman. No records are available concerning the ordering or shipping of the snow engines, but in 1912, the following letter on UNG letterhead. Mr. W.T. Young, R.D. 1, Halton, PA, July 25, 1912. In response to your telegram, I am herewith enclosing a check and voucher in favor of the Tynesta Valley Railroad Company in the amount of one. $160.16. Have the freight receipts properly seated and return to me with the voucher. Yours truly, F. Latarius, Treasure. Actual work on Cross Station began on June the 19th, 1912 with surveying by Donald Spence. Normal work week was six 10-hour days. Wages appear to have been between, been 20 to 22 cents per hour. June 22, 1912, R.V. Himes and W.H. Hoover started clearing the building site. June 23rd, Sunday, no work. Monday, June 24th, more men started to work clearing the site. These were A.M. O'Hara, Conrad Disque, T.D. Parrott, E.M. Corbett, S.C. Ewings, W.P. Painter, R.M. Harriger, S.M. Silvis, R.J. Rhodes, Dave Rhodes, James Silvis, Don Spence started building the office. R.E. Kerr was a water boy at $1.25 per day. In one of the time books, dated June 28th, James Silvis fell off the office roof at 11.30 a.m., complained of pain in small of back, two scratches on left arm. 
During July of 1912, approximately 40 men worked in the construction of Cross Station, clearing land, excavating for foundations, coolers, water lines, and so forth. Dwelling house number one was repaired and construction of the machine shop started. A stone crusher was hauled in from Winlac and installed in the area between the office and the building office building and the road. Stone was quarried about a quarter mile up the valley and hauled to the crusher by horse. July 29, 1912 appears to be the date when they started hauling the first of the two original snow engines to cross station from the railroad siding in Halton. Engine parts and boxes and crates of fitting were hauled on regular freight wagons by one or two teams. Large engine parts, bed plates, mainframes, flywheels were hauled on a big eight-wheel wagon by 10 or 12 teams of horses, except it was noted that Ira Lockwood had two teams of mules. The wagon was of mostly wood construction, reinforced with steel at points of stress. The wagon bed stood about waist high and the wheels about 30 inches high and eight inches wide, wood wheels with steel hubs and tires. A one-inch steel rod was attached to the fork truck of the wagon along the center line between the teams, which were hitched to it by a series of clevises and double trees. Two teams were hitched to each double tree, one on each side of the rod. Another wagon called the junk wagon traveled with the big wagon. The junk consisted of chains, jacks, lines, shoes, blocks, ties, and all the other necessary gear to help the big wagon along the way. Freight from Halton, including the big wagon, was hauled down the north side of the Clarion River to a point approximately where F-133 presently crosses the river, where a ford had been previously prepared to cross the river. A note on the time book, September 11, 1912, John Brightman landed at the station with the first main frame. This is the approximate location of the river crossing today. First time charged to erecting engines was in October of 1912. The name E.H. Marshall appears on the time book uh, on October the 15th. His time was all charged to erecting pumps. It appears that he might have been a, a more experienced man sent in to uh, set up the engines as he was paid somewhat higher than the laborers at 25 cents per hour. Early in January 1913, the compressors arrived at Halton. Once again, the Teamsters brought the, them across to Cross Station. Mr. C.C. C. Scott left Buffalo at 11 a.m. January the 4th and spent 20 days at Cross Station erecting compressors. I believe he was sent by Worthington to make sure that the compressors were installed properly. The first indication of the snow engine running was a note on the time book, January 6th and 7th, RV Van Tassel uh, station test, the same notation for A.M. Hare on the same day. Beginning in January 1913, uh, time was charged to operating, 12 hours per day, seven days a week. Mr. F.G. Jackson was chief engineer, also charged 12 hours a day for operating, but he took Sundays off. Daily pump report book was started on January the 22nd, 1913. However, there is no note of starting the pumps on that date, so I would assume that the engines were running at that time. Field lines listed in the pump book at that time were Dutch Hill, which would be comparable to F6, Huff,